Welcome back everyone to my seasonal anime review series. In this installment, I'll be going over some of the anime I watched during Spring 2023. In case you haven't seen my Winter 2023 review video, I'll give a quick refresher on the criteria that determines what I choose to talk about. Since there's always an absurd amount of isekai that airs every season, and since I am isekai trash, I'll mention only a couple if there are any worth talking about, no sequels, and since I watch basically everything that comes out every season, only picking a small handful of anime that really spoke to me. Now that that's settled, let's get straight into these reviews. Konosuba, an explosion on this wonderful world. This is one of the few original anime airing this season that I was super hyped for. However, I was a bit underwhelmed while watching this. A lot of Konosuba's charm and humor comes from the chemistry that Kazuma, Aqua, Darkness, and Megamine have together, and this is obviously focused on Megamine. While this was still decently funny, some of the comedy at times felt a little bland. Maybe it was an issue with the adaptation, I honestly couldn't tell you. I haven't read the source material to confirm, but it definitely wasn't bad and still worth a watch. This anime did a lot more for Megamine's relationship with Union, and for Union alone, than it did for Megamine in my opinion. All that being said, this is still a decent anime and it ties itself in with the main story quite nicely. If you're a Megamine enthusiast like most Konosuba fans are, this is definitely a great time for you. I was cautiously optimistic about this anime though. Since neither Studio Dean nor JC staff were continuing Konosuba, a new anime studio was chosen by the name of Drive, were in charge of Konosuba now, and after looking into them, decided that they weren't very trustworthy. Even though they nailed it with To Your Eternity Season 2, all of their other works were not very well received, which is where my cautious optimism came from. After finding that this prequel was a bit underwhelming, I'm still holding on to my cautious optimism for Season 3 of Konosuba. My love story with Yamada-kun at level 999. Yes, yes, yes. I absolutely adore romance anime and this hit the spot with 100% accuracy. Featuring the shoujo trope of meeting a hot guy that's kind of a dick at first, my love story with Yamada-kun told a story with that trope without it feeling too tropey most of the time. After getting cheated on and broken up with, Akane Kinoshita goes out to an IRL event of an MMO that her ex-boyfriend got her to play, called Forest of Savior, to get back at him. Akane dolled herself up to see if she could get her ex to regret his choices, but in the process, bumped into the famous pro gamer Akito Yamada and got him to pretend to be her new boyfriend after an unexpected change of plans. She slowly becomes his friend and meets up with her fellow guildmates outside of the game. My Love Story with Yamada-kun is a fantastically well done romance anime and it's a shame that it flew under most people's radar. I genuinely hope that more people discover this anime over time because this is the kind of romance anime that actually deserves an adaptation. Now the question that everyone is dying to know the answer to because anyone that watches romance anime knows this pain all too well. Does this anime actually go somewhere with its romance? Well, only one way to find out. Oshinoko. God. Damn. I was absolutely blown away by this. I miraculously avoided spoilers for this despite it being the most hyped up anime of the season. Oshinoko is an anime that gives us a peek into the world of the Japanese entertainment industry and its horrors. And horrific it is. The criticism, the stalking, the crazy parasocial fanatics, everything about not even specifically the Japanese entertainment industry, but the entertainment industry as a whole is a goddamn mess. Being famous isn't all that it's cracked up to be, and Oshinoko is a good example of why that is. Of course, some things about it are melodramatic for the sake of entertainment, but that's no excuse to ignore the underlying message of this story. Honestly, some parts about this anime were almost hard to watch, and I'm someone who doesn't get phased very easily. I think what really got me was that everything presented to you is more grounded in realism than most anime would be, and things like this do happen to actual people. Everything in Oshinoko was executed beautifully, and if you haven't already, go watch it. This is a prime candidate for anime of the year, and it's an anime that you absolutely do not want to miss out on. I did a video on Oshinoko as well if you'd like to hear my full thoughts on it. The link will be in the card above and in the description. My Clueless First Friend This one was so sweet and suffocatingly wholesome in the best way possible. Every moment of this anime was enjoyable from start to finish. Featuring Akane Nishimura, nicknamed the Grim Reaper, and Taiyo Takara, the Riz Master, we have a wholesome story about two 5th graders becoming the best of friends. Nishimura was constantly being bullied in school because of her dark and gloomy appearance, earning her the nickname Grim Reaper, and wasn't really able to make friends. Here comes along the new transfer student Takara who thought her nickname was the coolest thing in the world. Takara would spend pretty much every single moment he could with Nishimura and became her first ever friend while being able to make more along the way. The two of them got along very well. 
So well, in fact, that there was some romantic tension between the two. Takara would always unleash the Riz powers he didn't know he had to make Nishimura feel much better about herself whenever the opportunity presented itself to do so. Watching the two of them go about their days in school has been one of the cutest anime experiences I've had in a while, and I highly recommend this slice of life series to anyone looking for something super sweet to watch. My clue's first friend is an absolute must watch for this season. Dead Mount Death Play. Ow, the edge. That meme perfectly sums up this anime. Jokes aside, I'm actually very invested in this story. From the author of an amazing light novel and anime, do da da da, comes Dead Mount Death Play. This is a reverse isekai story about the corpse god who dies in battle only to reincarnate into the body of recently murdered Polka Shinoyama. In his new body, Polka strives to live a peaceful life in this new world he finds himself in, while attempting to avoid being murdered. He also was able to retain the magical abilities he had in his previous life and uses those powers to his advantage here, which only makes him a more interesting target to those trying to assassinate him. If you like Durarara, Dead Mount Deathplay is worth your while. While it isn't as good as Durarara in my opinion, the writing style is pretty much the same but with a lot of added edginess, but having a sense of familiarity throughout the anime definitely gave this some extra points for me. The cast is charismatic, the animation is good, and the story is engaging. Each character in the cast has their own little quirk that makes them interesting, so my eyes and ears are basically focused on the screen and nothing else while watching this anime, and I'm very excited that we're getting more of Dead Mount Deathplay. Kamikatsu, working for God in a godless world. Kamikatsu is an isekai that was absolute chaos from start to finish, and I'm here for it. This one was an underappreciated anime. Yukito Urabe was the son of what was essentially a cult leader and was intentionally killed by his father in a ritual that required him to be submerged in the water for a couple of days. His father insisted that the god they worshipped wouldn't let him die and that he'd be perfectly safe. Obviously, Yukito drowned. Right before his death, he wished that he could get a second shot at life in a world where religion didn't exist, and his wish was granted, which led to some very interesting events. At the start, Kamikatsu was a good commentary piece on what a world that never invented religion would be like, and how a government that had no religion to base its laws on would govern. I don't know about the laws of other countries, but here in the land of the free, home of the burger munchers, the laws are heavily based on Christianity and or Christian values, so that was interesting to see. However, it abandons all of that during the latter half and just becomes something lewd enough to give interspecies of viewers a run for its money, but somehow still manages to make sense. Can't show you any of that here though. Kamikatsu is well written chaos at its finest, was pretty hilarious, and gives you something to think about at the start. My only complaint about the anime was the CG. Some of it was decent, but most of it was horrible, and I kind of feel like that was intentional. It was very, uh, avant-garde in the art style's execution. All in all, if you're looking for a good laugh and some cool fight scenes, give Kamikatsu a chance. Currently, all the ecchi is censored and there's no home video version out, so it might be worth holding off until one does come out, so keep that in mind. Hell's Paradise In the next installment of Shonen Jump anime adaptations, we received Hell's Paradise. This one was a bit of a slow burner for me. I wasn't all that intrigued at the beginning, but by the time the last episode came out, I was begging for more. Gabimaru is a criminal who was set to be executed for his crimes. However, every attempt to execute him ends in failure. He can be wounded, but he cannot die. At least, not very easily. Sakari Yamada Asaimon was assigned to be his executioner after every other execution attempt failed. She, however, didn't resort to killing him, but instead offered him a chance to be pardoned for his crimes so that Gabimaru could be with his wife again. Along with many other criminals who wish to be pardoned for their crimes, he sets off to Shinsekyo with Sakari to find the elixir of life to grant the Shogun immortality. Only one of the criminals who manages to survive the trip to this strange island gets a pardon though, so it's a race to see who can find and bring the elixir back first. The island of Shinsekyo is a nightmarish hellhole with plenty of monsters that are constantly trying to kill everyone who isn't welcome on the island, which are mostly humans. The island and its inhabitants are the most interesting part of the anime in my opinion. The characters aren't too terribly deep, but Gabimaru potentially being able to see his wife again, who by the way is a top tier waifu, is what's keeping me hooked more than anything else aside from learning more about the island. I'm typically not a big fan of Shonen Jump anime, but their latest adaptations have been pretty good and Hell's Paradise is definitely one of those good ones. I don't need to tell you to go watch it, it's from Shonen Jump, so you've probably already watched it anyway. I'm excited for season 2. A Galaxy Next Door My bias for cute and chill anime shines through yet again with me favoring A Galaxy Next Door. This one's a romance anime about Ichiro Kuga, a struggling shoujo manga artist, and Shiori Goshiki, a novice artist and princess of the star people. 
after the passing of the father of Ichiro's younger siblings, he's now tasked to take care of them while trying to balance his career as a manga artist. Life is tough for him with manga sales being down, his assistants leaving, and deadlines approaching quickly. However, hopes come for him in the form of Shiori. With her by his side, Ichiro's life becomes easier to handle until he accidentally touches Shiori's stinger. By touching her stinger, the two of them are now engaged and life for them both becomes rather peculiar. A Galaxy Next Door was super comfy from start to finish. I can't get enough of romance anime, especially ones like these. While I'm not opposed to watching other kinds of romance anime, it does get tiring watching ones that intentionally put off the romance until the very last episode or just blue ball you by making nothing happen. Obviously there are exceptions, but still, these kinds of romance anime are better. It's very satisfying when the couple to be doesn't beat around the bush and actually engages in proper romance. Holding me as a prime example of this kind of romance anime, and I'm glad we have a galaxy next door to add to the list of more mature romance anime to watch. Skip and Loafer. What's this? Another totally unexpected chill anime that made it onto this list? Who would have thunk it? Skip and Loafer is pretty much just about people being people. Nothing too crazy happens in this one. Mitsumi Iwakura is a genius high school girl from the countryside who moved to Tokyo to pursue her big dream. Mitsumi wants to become a politician to help bring positive changes to Japan, mainly focusing on the depopulation issue of the Japanese countryside. Despite her confidence that nothing will go wrong during her first day of school, everything that could go wrong went wrong. She got lost trying to find her way to school and became known as the puker. But luckily she had fellow classmate Sosuke Shima to help her out. From here on, it's pretty much just your average high school slice of life anime with a hint of drama here and there. Similarly to A Galaxy Next Door, Skip and Loafer leans more onto the mature side. The way the characters are written and portrayed feels a lot more realistic than most other anime. Watching them grow as characters during the unfortunate short runtime of only 12 episodes was a much needed treat. Can we also take a moment to acknowledge Mika's haircut? This is a hairstyle I actually really like, but can't recall seeing in any more modern anime. I've really only seen it in older anime, with Ryoko Asakura and Rin Tosuka from the Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya and the Fate series being the first to come to mind. More anime girls with this split bang haircut please. If you're looking for a more human and relatable anime to watch, I highly recommend giving Skip and Low for a shot. Last but not least, Tengoku Daimakyo. Holy shit. Tengoku Daimakyo is another huge contender for anime of the year, and another one that blew me away. Tengoku Daimakyo is a post-apocalyptic sci-fi mystery anime adapted by Production IG following two separate casts of characters. First, with two survivors of the apocalypse Kiruko and Maru, who are searching for a place called Heaven, and second, with children kept safely in a nursery with most of the focus being on an individual by the name Tokyo. Most of the anime is focused on Kiruko and Maru, however. The anime depicts their journey across desolate Japan to find Heaven in hopes of finding answers to their strife. With civilization being gone, Japan is now a lawless land, so it's every man for himself. The two of them must survive the wastelands amidst immoral survivors as well as man-eating monsters aptly named man-eaters that were born during the disaster that wiped out most of humanity. The nursery is still a bit of a mystery though. The children kept there live normal lives, or as normal as a life can be when the ones raising you don't teach you anything about being human. Tokyo and her friends go about their lives as they discover human instinct in various forms. The facility itself is rather strange. Why are these children here? What is their goal with these children? The two separate casts provide a unique sense of storytelling with neither of the two being very clear about when exactly it is they take place. Are they running parallel to each other? Is one a prequel? If so, which story comes first? The two are very connected to each other in not so obvious ways and it's up to us, the viewers, to use the clues the anime gives us to put two and two together. I really like the way Tengoku Daimakyo makes you think about both of its stories. In my opinion, this is probably mystery writing at its finest and easily lends itself to being a 10 out of 10 anime. I was skeptical about it since this was licensed by Disney and even though I never heard of Tengoku Daimakyo prior to this season of anime, I was worried to see complaints about Disney maybe butchering the western release to make it more family friendly, but I was relieved to see that nothing of the sort came about to my knowledge. It's actually a mature and decently gory anime with none of that getting censored. Disney didn't need to dip their toes in the anime, but if they're willing to provide us with bangers like this and not ruin them, maybe it won't be such a bad thing. Still hate them as a company though. Anyway, go watch Tengoku Daimakyo. You don't want to miss out on peak mystery. With that, we end this season's review. Man, there were a lot of good anime that aired, so it was hard to narrow my selections down to just these 10. 
Of all the anime that was released this season, I watched 36 of them. I may or may not have a problem, I'm not sure. But I do know that I don't have a life. I guess that would count as having a problem. Oh well. Anyway, what were your guys' favorites this season? Did I happen to cover any of them? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this season's anime, so leave a comment down below if you want to continue this discussion. Until next time, see ya.